Now, Australian Sports Commission's uh, CEO, Kieran Perkins, a uh, swimming great, has told the project we should be proud of Ray Gunn, the break dancer, and what he called her awesome display at the Olympics. In all of the commentary and the dialogue that's gone on, you know, all the keyboard worries and haters out of there, get back in your box. We are Australia, we are Australian. To have one of our athletes so proud to wear our uniform and then to bring what's unique about us to the international stage, we should all be proud. But in comments on the project's own Instagram page, proud is the last thing Aussies are feeling right now. One commenter said Ray Gunn's display was insulting and shameful uh, and a display of privilege and appropriation. And another said it's not hating to say the performance stank and there must have been some females in Australia that could do better. I will be talking to a breakdance uh, aficionado who's really into this sort of stuff a little bit later in the program. But, Dan, I've got to say, I don't appreciate Australians being bullied into silence. What, we can't be critical of something as public as an Olympic performance well, <laughs> when the whole world's laughing at it, we're not allowed to? Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, the judges gave it zero. Right, so it's not as if the judges said it was a great performance yeah, and people were making fun of go it. Go bully was, them, not us. <laughs> it was objectively a, a bad performance. Um, I don't understand uh, those who are defending. I've got no problem with her as a person. No. I just don't understand why is she there at the Olympics, why is that sport at the Olympics, and couldn't the money that was invested into that particular sport been of use elsewhere? So it just seems such a strange scenario. And, and we're sort of being weird. gaslit. We're, we're so, oh, it was so awesome, it was so good. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a good performance. I genuinely believe, and I'm not saying this to be, uh, you know, bold or hyperbolic, uh, I could do better. I, I have 100% confidence. Give me half a day, I could put together a better routine. So, and, and a lot of people feel that way. So when you're looking at something at Olympic level and you yeah. think you can do better... There's a problem. Now, let's talk about the uh, Elon Musk, Donald Trump interview. It went for two hours. But the media, I've got to say, were not impressed. USA Today are amongst the media slamming it. They call it a, called it an unmitigated disaster between, listen to this, a right-wing loon and a fascism-curious billionaire. They also said uh, he was rambling, babbling on about crowd sizes and immigration and President Joe Biden and whatever else seemed to pass through his mind and just a whole lot of other nonsense. But the numbers don't lie. The, the, the number of people who've listened to that interview, who have heard parts of it or all of it, is enormous. I, I think... By any measure, it was an enormous success if you want to get your message across. Well, exactly. And, you know, one of the key parts of a democracy is for candidates to engage in open form discussion. I mean, a two hour discussion, Trump will routinely do rallies that are one, two plus hours. Whether you like him or not, the reality is that he's probably been one of the most open and transparent presidential mm. candidates we've seen. And we need to have more of these long form uh, debates and, and discussions, not less. I mean, Kamala Harris won't even front a 10-minute interview, let, let alone do a two-hour sit-down. So, oh. you know, which one is better for democracy? Well, absolutely. And the fact that so many topics were discussed in a very casual manner with two people speaking, um, I think it just gave a great insight into where that candidate stood on a range of issues. And that, that's what you want as a voter. You want to know what the, uh, the candidate is going to do in office. Now, just before he left for yet another holiday, President Joe Biden, remember him, he sat down with CBS and he again pushed that lie about President Donald Trump calling white supremacists in Charlottesville very fine people. It's a consequence of those neo-Nazis and white supremacists come out of fields in America with torches, carrying Nazi banners press went to the then President Trump and said, what do you think? He said, they're very fine people on both sides. And I knew then. I knew I'd do something. And that's how I decided to run. I cannot believe we are still hearing this absolute lie that has been debunked over and over again because the whole thing's on video. We're still hearing it. And, and there was no pushback from that interview. In fact, he reinforced that lie. It's a hoax and a lie. Even the left-wing Snopes, the uh, fact-checking side, has belatedly acknowledged it's a lie. And let's go to the tape because this is what Pres President Trump actually said. 
And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? They should be condemned totally. So he was talking about the people who were at that protest because they didn't want a statue to come down. I would argue those people are on the right side of history, uh, and there were very fine people amongst them. They're not the neo-Nazis. That's like pretending that the women's march in Melbourne yep. were all neo-Nazis because a bunch of idiots turned up and gate-crashed their protest. I, I can't believe this lie is still got still got currency now in 2024. Well, exactly, and, and when you actually look at the whole clip, it's Trump said the exact opposite, mm. the exact opposite of what they accuse him of. Uh, I think that the hope that we do have is with social media, with Twitter and with others, this is actually being uncovered. You know, 20 or 30 years ago, we never would have known yeah. that this was all a hoax uh, and this was all a lie. But the reality is I think more and more people, particularly what happened in COVID and other things, a lot more people are beginning to realise that the mainstream media is not always what it seems. Absolutely. Dan Wilde, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you.